Hey guys, I'm Mark and today I'm over at my friend Cindy's house. Cindy lives right down the street from the farm and she's a regular customer at the nursery. It's not atypical for us to see her every week. Sometimes we'll see her every day during some parts of the spring. But we're over at her place today because she's just got gorgeous gardens throughout her property. Namely, for sake of this video, we're going to be talking about her dahlias. Cindy, Cindy has been growing dahlias are really big into growing dahlias for the past 16 years. She's been gardening for over 60 years, so everything she does is really great. Uh, but the dahlias are just phenomenal, especially this time of year. And I thought I'd come over and do a video about them and show it to you guys because I wanna show you some of where my inspiration is gonna come from next year when I think I'm gonna put in a dahlia garden at our farm. Uh, but you can see behind me, we've just got this gorgeous, lush, uh, bed of dahlias. Cindy specializes in dinner plate dahlias. She also does mini formal dahlias, pom-poms, and then some ball varieties, but they're all kind of mixed in here together. Uh, so I wanted to go over some of the cultural things first that she does because she told me how she grows these guys. At least she told me a lot about how she grows these guys. She won't go into all the details uh, for sake of secrecy. She's uh, She's won a lot of competitions with these. She competes in the Maryland State Fair and she's won a lot of bunch of stuff there. And she's also won a bunch of awards over at Longwood Gardens. Uh, so she's not willing to give up all the tips and tricks, but she did tell me a few things that I'll share with you guys. The first thing you're probably gonna notice is how these dahlias are so close to one another. You just got this big giant bed. You don't have these specific um, cultivars planted one here and then four feet down, you got another one and you got another one. They're all kind of densely packed together. and Cindy tells me that over the years, she's realized that when they're planted like that, they sort of support one another really well. Because it's a very tall plant and they're somewhat, they're somewhat fragile and a good storm can take them down pretty easily. So when they're planted together like this, they just, they kind of got the buddy system going on. Also, another thing that she's a big fan of is these large tomato cages. They just sort of maintain the right height. They come up through them and, and they're just very nice for supporting them all together. So I guess we'll go back in terms of the cultural things. Um, we'll go back to the beginning and when she plants them in the like at the very start of things. It's probably a great place to start off. Oh, I forgot about to tell you, planting them close together like this also takes care of a large part of the weeds. Want to add that in? Anyway, let's go to the beginning when they get planted. First thing you want to make sure you do is you plant your tubers into warm, dry, fluffy soil. She couldn't stress this enough. She says she tills her soil four times, twice normal, and then she starts incorporating things, uh, her different, um, whatever her, she's gonna enrich the soil with the third time, and then the fourth time she'll till it the day before she plants so that it's all nice and fluffy and ready to go. And that dry, fluffy soil is really important and good for drainage, as well as having the warm soil there. You want the warmth of the sun to heat up that soil the, the tubers really don't like cold soil at all. She didn't give me a temperature on how warm it needs to be. She just says that you should be able to come out here and stick your hand in the soil and it should feel somewhat pleasant, soft. It shouldn't get that wet coldness to it. If it's still wet and cold, then you wanna stay away from planting for a little while longer. But in general, as a rule of thumb, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you wait until at least a week after your last frost in your area. So that's planting um, and then Basically wait, she says it's important not to water at all until you start seeing green, green leaves come up. You wanna have enough vegetation above the soil surface before you even think about watering. And then fertilizing, she will start fertilizing once they're about two feet tall. And then after that, you're gonna start seeing them bloom about the third week of July. And then they're just gonna keep on blooming all the way into pretty much the first frost. But September is a great time to see them. They love those cooler nights. That's when they really start to pop and explode. You can see how lush they are. They're just looking wonderful. So maybe right now, how about we just take the camera off the tripod and we'll just walk around and I'll just kind of show you these blooms one by one and we'll get some close-ups. Look at that yellow one right there. Cindy said the other day, she said she won an award with this yellow one right here. I think it's, uh, I think it's just a fantastic bloom. It's nothing, you know, no, no bicolors or crazy colors going on. It's just a perfect pale yellow color. You can see how big it is compared to my hand. That's a, that's a dinner plate variety. We just had a nice rain last night. I was afraid uh, of coming out here. I could hear 
on the tin roof outside on the porch that the rain was just driving down. So I thought to myself, oh gosh, I hope, uh, I hope the, uh, the dahlias didn't all blow over. That would be my luck. But aren't they fantastic? They're just, they're just amazing. Unbelievable pastel colors. See, this is, this is a great day to be out here. When it's cloudy like this, not too much sun out, the camera really picks up colors well in that kind of situation. This is a very nice orange ball variety. Let's go on and continue around. Not just the blooms themselves, but you can see the foliage on these guys. It's just incredible. I mean, just look at the, how lush the leaves are. And uh, Cindy says that she sprays something on them, but she won't tell me what it is because it's a secret and she competes with them. But she did say that if you're curious enough to leave a comment, in the comments section and we can start negotiations. Those are her words. So, But you can see they're just wonderful. Look at this red one. Let's see if we can get it down low enough that it gets the green behind it as a contrast. Isn't that wonderful? A lot of these guys are just starting to open up. Another tip or trick that she showed me that you're gonna to wanna to do with these guys, here's probably a really good example down here. When you have a main bud like this, she says it's good to take the, the side shoots off or the side buds off down here, in the, uh, down here in the leaf union because what that'll do is, what that'll do is it'll stimulate growth all the way up into the main bud. You get rid of these guys and the plant's able to dedicate its energy all the way up into the main top bud here and you get a much fuller bloom. And then also, also for sake of competing, she said that uh, the judges don't like to see the stuff down there in the, uh, in the leaf axles. So she's got a very nice pair of uh, bonsai scissors that she goes in and cuts them just right. But you can tell that she just takes an incredible amount of care and attention to detail with these guys. It's a beautiful white one. There was a bee on that blossom. You can tell how big that's going to be. Let's wrap around. There's one of those Lacinata types. Look at that, isn't that wonderful? Beautiful, beautiful flowers. It's a nice deep this looks like it's going to be a nice red one. Whoops. Gorgeous. There's some of the tomato cages, and you can sort of see the proximity that she has them. She's got them pretty tight, and I, I assume that at the base of each tomato is where, or at the base of each tomato cage, excuse me, is where she has one set of tubers for the variety. So that gives you an idea of what the spacing is that she works with. But those big tomato cages, she, uh, she made a point that, that she just loves using those. And they do a great job. I mean, look at this bed, how it's still standing. And here we are, September. We've had some pretty healthy thunderstorms come through here and they're just still looking wonderful. This has gotta be the biggest bloom in the whole bed. Look at that. It's just massive. It's almost the size of my face. Unbelievable flower. So anyway, that's her bed. Um, I did want to talk about a couple other things to finish up this video with. I guess uh, the, the main thing I want to talk about is how she packs these roots in for the winter time. There's a whole series of steps that she takes to make sure that the tubers remain nice and healthy so that the next time they get planted in the spring, they'll just be that much more ready to go. The first thing that she starts out with is she'll cut them down. She'll cut them down right at about the first frost and she'll do that about 12 inches off the ground and then she'll go ahead with her shovel. It's just a regular spade shovel and she'll get she says over the years, you kind of get used to exactly how large that tuber is going to be just by gauging the size of the stem and what it looks like. So once you get a sort of a feel for it, you just stay away from it. You don't want to slice into the tuber or anything. You just want to be just enough, just enough far away from it um, that when you stick the shovel in, you pull it back, that they lift up very nicely. 
These tubers are not that deep. You'd be surprised how shallow they are to the surface relative to some other things. So when it comes to digging them up and storing them over for the winter, they're pretty easy to do. Uh, but she'll, she'll lift them up and then she'll dry them out like in her garage on a picnic table for a couple weeks and then she'll go ahead and store them in cardboard boxes. Now she mentioned that it's very important to use cardboard boxes because they breathe. Something like plastic doesn't breathe quite as, quite as well, but she'll use a heavy gauge corrugated cardboard box and then she'll pack them inside of that box with shavings, with wood shavings, like planer shavings from a wood shop. So you don't want like sawdust, like flour. You want something a little bit coarser than that, like something that would come out of like a wood shop uh, or even a mill. And then you put a layer of shavings in the bottom of the box. You put your tubers in on top of that, another layer of shavings and then another layer of tubers. And then close the boxes up and then she'll store them just like that in her garage, stacked up on the floor. She'll make sure that the temperature remains in that garage somewhere around 35 to 40 degrees. It's just kind of natural that her garage stays that way, the way it's set up. But that's, uh, that's the ideal to keep them, you want the ideal temperature to keep them. You want them to stay nice and cool. And if you can find some sort of way to insulate them a little bit, that'll help as well. It'll just keep the temperature that much more consistent. But you just want to make sure that they breathe a little bit. That was kind of the main gist. Uh, so you stack them up on the floors, you store them in boxes, and then you just leave them like that until about sometime in April where you come back to inspect them, open up the boxes, go through, just make sure there's no rot or diseases or anything like that going on. If there is, then you're just going to want to cut those parts out, get them out of the picture. But then while you're in there checking on them in April, it's a very good time, at least she says, to go ahead and divide your tubers. If you're going to do it, that's the time to do it. Divide them up and then put them right back in the boxes and sit and wait for another couple months until we're in, oh, about a couple weeks after the last frost date when that ground is nice and warm and ready to go. So that's it, guys. That's my video on Cindy's Dahlias. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. I'll see you next time.